I found myself in need of a new summer coat, so I thought this was the perfect excuse to make a version of the Slytherin Hogwarts robes. My old summer coat, which served me for I think 7 years, had already that vibe and silhouette going on. The materials I plan on using for this project is black cotton bed sheets from the dollar store. It's good quality fabric for a low price. This mystery fabric from the 60s maybe, black velvet ribbons and these closures made out of pewter from the second hand store. For the pattern I'm going to mash these medieval based patterns together and tweak them a little to fit with my Victorian-esque clothing. To get the basic pattern piece, I lay paper tablecloth on top of the pattern sheet, and since it's kind of see-through, I simply trace out the pattern piece with the marker. After making a twirl and making some small adjustments, I was satisfied with the silhouette and fullness of the skirt part. So I could start on making the real deal. Starting on the outside of the coat, I pin the pattern pieces down to the fabric. before cutting out all of the pieces with fabric shears. First seam together the pieces by the shoulder area to the waistline. Except for the front pieces, which are sewn together the entire way. Using a self-treading needle, I fasten all loose threads. Starting the process of pressing the seams.
And seeming the shoulder seams together. Then the process of sewing in the wedges starts. I add a total of 5 wedges to the skirt part. The bottom of each wedge is 40cm wide, making the coat really swooshy. I also make sure to leave room for pockets. Speaking of pockets, they also need to be sewn together. I decided to add bias tape to strengthen the seam of the pockets, since I did make them big enough to hold a water bottle. I first sew the darts of the hood. Then the rest of the hood. I really like this big type of hood since they can easily fit over a big hairdo.
and finally joining the hood to the coat. Time for sleeves. I start with sewing down the three velvet ribbons on the sleeve cuff. I like the look of them in Fantastic Beast, and since I'm going for an older model, I thought it would be fitting. Seaming the sleeves together, trying my best to line up the stripes. Finally, seaming the sleeves into place. stitched a piece of stiff linen to the collar to help strengthening it and to make it lay down the way I want it to. After washing the mystery fabric by hand, it shrunk about 40%. It became rather scratchy and plasticky to the touch. Not something you want as a lining or next to the skin. fabric in my fabric stash. I did not have enough to do the entire lining, so I focused on the most important pieces, such as the sleeves, the hood and the two front pieces. I also could piece together two wedges from the fabric.
first start to seam together the hood and sleeves. Then, with the right sides facing each other, I stitch these lining parts to the outside of the coat. Once turned inside out, I top stitched the cuff of the sleeves and the brim of the hood. The rest of the lining is made the same way as the outside. My mother had a similar fabric as the one I used for the outside of the coat in her stash, so I made the rest of the lining from that. Then, once again, with the right sides facing each other, I sew the lining to the outside of the coat. I seam together the sides and the bottom edge.
once I've turned it inside out, like a big pillowcase, I close up the seam where the hood meets the neckline. This I do by using the ladder stitch. Continuing on finishing the top stitching. And finally sewing the sleeve lining in place. This is also done by hand. I gave the closures a wash of black acrylic paint to bring out the details on it. I also embroidered this little name tag. which I whip stitched in place to the lighting on the right hand side. Once I marked out with tailor's chalk where I want the closures to go, I sew them in place with some strong silk thread.
I decided to go for a brooch instead of an embroidery patch, since it would match the aesthetic better. And it's finished. When sweet Molly Ryan declared that aeroplane riding she dared, her sweetheart began to think of a plan where they could be wed overhead. So he said, I will get an airship right away. A neat one to hold about two. Then smiling with joy, she said to her boy, you're the captain and I am the crew. Take me up, up, up with you, dear, your way up to the sky. Sail around the moon for a quiet moon just to pass the new and I let us float, float, float through the clouds and just have a lot of fun. We'll go up, up, up as two and then come down as one. Take me up along with you, me darling, do, and let us go away into a latitude about as near as anybody that has ever reached the sky. We can sail around the lunar planet, making love and hugging every time it can it, with nobody in the aeroplane except the past you and I. We could float a little flying boat a little while we wrote a little scented note, a little subsequent to passing through the clouds and having lots of fun. We'll go up into the sweetest sky of blue and on ascending, we will figure up as two, but on returning to old terra firma, we will be as one. <laughs> Now Molly goes up every day, while Barney, her sweetheart, must stay alone down below where messages go of wireless love to his dove far above. And then Molly replies, don't you see, just three letters C, Q, and D, their meaning is clear.